up y'all welcome to simply bt's i'm tage if you're new to the family and today i am doing a video that i should have been done but i'm just now getting to it so don't hate me but um had a lot of people sending me messages about am i going to do a video about how we went on our trip to china so that's what this is all about all right so let's just get right to it how did we get to go to china we actually were thinking of going to china or thailand or Paris, we couldn't figure out which one. We want to go visit them all, but just so happened we were looking on Groupon. You guys know I love Groupon. If you don't know, I do. We were on Groupon and we seen that they had, um, I know you guys see those getaways, all-inclusive getaways, and we're like, wow, they got one to China. So we booked it. Um, and the travel agent company that we went through was called Rewards Travel China. So this is our first time booking a um, travel through Groupon and I will tell you now we will do it again because it's not that expensive depending on your trip um, and it, it was just there's great deals out there. So that was our first time doing it so it turned out really well. So how it works, um, you'll book your Groupon, when you'll purchase your uh, Groupon, after you purchase it then you have to go reach out to Rewards Travel China and they're going to want your voucher number. And then you could pay, you pay that amount and then you, then you decide, hey, okay, do I want to do any excursions? And of course you should see some things like the Great Wall, um, Summer Palace and all that good stuff. So what excursions do you want to book? Um, you'll do that also to go to China. You're going to need a visa. Okay, you can't just go to China with your passport. Obviously you need that too, but you're also going to need a visa, which is usually about $150. So with all of that, with the two of us, myself and my husband, Brandon, um, you're going to pay um, probably less than $4,000 together, um, just depending, obviously, uh, on what excursion you pick. You don't have to pick all of the excursions. And to be honest with you, I would suggest you not pick all the excursions. Leave a day or two or maybe three for you guys to go explore and do some things on your own. Um, you can sign a voucher or a waiver that says, hey, you know, we understand we're not getting our money back, but we want to go do our own thing. We had a lot of people do that. They went to go to Disney, they went to the zoo, or maybe they just slept in. I mean, it's completely up to you. The trip that we did was nine or 10 days, something like that. So you're, you're gonna have to be prepared, obviously, for a very long flight, uh, anywhere between 12 and 15 hours, 16 hours. So be, pre be prepared for a very, very long flight. Before we went, I didn't know anybody that had went to China. None of my friends went to China. Nobody I knew went to China. So I was like, okay, I need to figure out what we need. So I'm Googling, I'm on YouTube, and I watch a bunch of videos trying to figure out what to expect. So I kind of combined everything that I've learned from my experience to kind of get you prepared if you decide to go because I think it is definitely worth the trip and it was definitely um, eye-opening for us. So if you're going to China, um, and if you're going through Rewards Travel China or through somebody else, you know, whatever works. So through Rewards Travel China, they did everything for us as far as getting our visa. We took our picture, sent all the information in, and then they took care of it. So obviously going through an agency made it really quick. Um, and, but you know, obviously there's other people who go on their own. It's up to you, you know, depending on how adventurous you are. So before you go on your trip, like I said, you gotta get a visa, you gotta get a passport. There's two things right there. Also, um, in China, we found out that Google, Facebook, Instagram, all your favorite social media crack sites, uh, yeah, YouTube, <laughs> you can't have access to that unless you get a VPN address. What is that? We were like, what is that? So basically, it's just an address that kind of basically says that place like you're in the United States for you um, instead of being in China. So half the time when I was there, it kept saying that I was in New York, just somewhere else. It doesn't have to be the United States, just somewhere else. So you need a VPN address. I got ours through VPN Express. It was like $13 a month. Of course, I only used it for the two weeks we were there. After that, cancel the subscription. Very easy, but very much needed if you want to use your phone because it's very expensive. Next thing, talking about your phone, call your mobile company, Verizon, Sprint, T-Mobile, who you're with, and make sure they know you're going out the country and see if you need to get an international plan. I think the plan that I had to end up picking was $10 a day that I had unlimited text, talk, um, internet access. So make sure you check into that as well too so you'll know obviously what, you know, you're not having this sky high bill when you get back home. Um, another thing, you also wanna make sure your, um, you call your credit card company, whatever credit card you're going to take. 
so they know that you are traveling abroad. So you don't get there and your car is canceled. We do not want that. So make sure you call your credit card company as well too. Um, I would suggest you go ahead and bring some cash, but don't bring too much cash because there are ATMs there and you can take some money out and it doesn't cost that much if you take it directly out the ATM. So um, it'll go ahead and convert it for you. You don't have to pay, you might pay a small fee. It's very small. Also, we learned really quick that some type of translator is a must on your phone. Um, a lot of uh, people in China already have translators on their phone and sometimes when you can't communicate with them, they'll pull their translator out, they'll talk to it and then they'll speak it in English for you and vice versa. We downloaded Google Translator and it worked really good. Sometimes it did not work good um, because in China, obviously there's different aspects of the language just like Southern and New Yorkers and their slang. So, I mean, some things work, but some did not, but it definitely makes a big difference. If you're trying to order food and an entire menu is in Chinese or you're, you're trying to go somewhere and everything is completely in Chinese and you don't speak Chinese, you need a translator, okay? Also, you wanna get you a military, I think it's an N19 um, mask. It's kind of like the mask that you see uh, the nurses wear or if you're cleaning your house, those type of masks. Um, you want to get one of those. Um, they're not that expensive, but you do want to have them. While we were in China, we never used ours. And they are for the days that the pollution is really, really bad. Okay, now let's talk about some of this nitty gritty stuff that you need before you go. Um, obviously, you already know. If you're going to China, especially in the summertime, it's going to be hot. So pack very light, and I do mean light. Comfortable shoes if you're going to be going on excursion and sightseeing, comfortable shoes. You need a hat, you need an umbrella, you need all that good stuff. So just simple stuff that you already know that you need to pack, okay? But also, you need to pack some tissue, okay? Because when you go to public restrooms in China, there is no tissue in the um, restrooms, okay? No tissue whatsoever. You need to bring your own little tissue, get you some uh, little small packs and just make sure you have enough. Um, also, there is no, usually there's no soap in the restrooms as well too. It's very rare you'll see soap, so if you want to bring your own little soap thing, you can bring it as well. And then also you might want to bring some sanitizer, okay? Um, because a lot of this stuff, you know, they just don't have it um, in the restroom. I'm not trying to say you can't purchase this stuff at the store, but you know, just in case, let's just go ahead and have it, bring you some over from America or wherever you're coming from. They have squatters, so um, if you're not a good squatter, this is, this is definitely going to be hard for you. I used a squatter one time, but I'm almost six feet tall, so me trying to squat is just not the best uh, for me. Um, so what I would do, usually the, in the um, handicap stall, there is a regular toilet. So I will wait in the line, I don't care if it's 20 minutes, and I will wait for that regular toilet, okay? But another thing with your tissue, you're not supposed to flush it down the toilet, you're supposed to put it in a trash can. I did, you heard me right, I did say that. You're supposed to put it in a trash can because you know, China's all about not wasting. So that you know, you, you need to put your stuff in the trash can and it doesn't matter what it is, right? One or two, you're supposed to put it in the trash can and not flush it, okay? And then sometimes in the restrooms, there's a, a, an attendant there that will go ahead and pull the trash bags out or the trash out and switch them out, you know, really quick. But I say all this because the restrooms are, they do have a, a, a a odor to them so you might think you know it they're dirty or something but it's just because everybody's using the restroom and they're doing what they're supposed to do by putting the tissue in the toilet so get your mind mentally prepared for that um, but also most of the hotels have a regular toilet as well as a regular um they have tissue in there that it's a regular toilet so usually the hotels are just like american hotels Oh, and I forgot to tell you guys, obviously when you pack light, just pack everything you need because most of the time, obviously like somebody like me being 5'10", um, they're not going to have my clothing size hardly. Like I tried to purchase some clothes there and nothing could hardly fit because I'm a big girl. So more than likely they're not going to have your size. Is that there's no ice hardly anywhere. It's very hard to find ice. So just get prepared that most of your drinks will be room temperature, if not hot, because that is the way that they do things there. So if you're going to a new culture, you gotta kinda take it on and see what that culture is doing. So be prepared, Every nothing's gonna be cold, right? It's very rare that anything's cold. Be prepared that you, they eat pretty much the same food morning, noon, and night, you know, as far as different types of food. 
So, you know, at our hotel at least, you know, they're, they have like some little pancake type um, bread. But most of the time, the same thing that you can eat at lunch, you can eat it at dinner, breakfast, it doesn't matter. So they can eat it at any time, the noodles, um, soup, it does not matter. So I, I say this, that, hey, you know, try it all. Um, if you decide to go out by yourself and, or you don't go through a travel agency and you're out looking, make sure you take a picture of the card of your hotel in Chinese. So in case you get lost, it's already in that language. So if you gotta get a taxi or if you gotta get help from somebody, already in their language and they can help you right don't convert your money at the airport wait to convert your money till you get to the hotel unless you absolutely have to if you're going to convert some money at the airport just convert just a little bit and then wait till you get to the hotel most of the hotels will convert for free at the airport they get a commission so you know your rate will be a little bit different so just be cautious of that Believe it or not, a lot of people are from the countryside. So to get you prepared, one of the last things I want to say is that um, a lot of people have not seen foreigners in China, right? Um, a lot of them don't have TV. They don't have access to the internet like we do, right? A lot of things that we take for granted, they don't have access to that. So a foreigner is like really like their first time sometimes seeing anybody of our kind. African American, Caucasian, doesn't matter. So while we were there, we learned really quickly that um, a lot of people had never seen an African American person before, especially someone like me and my husband who were tall, dark skinned, and then had I had braids. So it was just very different for them. So a lot of them were actually scared of us, like a lot of the little kids, they were scared. Um, and I know a lot of people are like, what, they've never seen a black person? No, you take it for granted that, you know, you watch TV and you, get, and you live in maybe like America and you get to see all different kind of cultures. Well, a lot of them don't. And so a lot of them are, uh, especially like a lot of the older people sometimes, they just have never been exposed. So be prepared that they do not mean to offend you if they stare at you or if they look like they're afraid of you or if they want to touch you or touch your hair. Be prepared that they are going to do that. Um, accept it, you know, you're in someone else's territory. Be nice. Uh, my husband fussed at me that I was like, F, you know, sometimes it was overwhelming because sometimes we would get crowds and um, they do want to take a picture with you, right? They want to go show their friends, um, hey, look what I met today. Look who I met today, right? Um, they used to call my, they call my husband the big Superman. Um, big Superman, tall Superman. So, um, you know, you're, you're almost like a celebrity there, seriously. Uh, but it's just because, you know, just imagine if you had never seen someone like, you know, completely different from you. So me and my husband joke that there's like certain ways that they will ask to take a picture of you, right? Let me show you the first way. Okay, so you're the person, they're literally walk by like this, y'all, and they're recording you, right? <laughs> or they will have somebody literally just they, they don't even ask you they just come stand right next to you and they'll have somebody else just take the picture without even asking you i mean that's just what they do right that's just what they do so just be prepared so literally you're minding your business right you're doing something someone will walk up to you and say they can't speak english but they'll be like and you're like oh you want to take a picture and they'll have a selfie screen ready like yeah so you take a picture with them right they take a picture but usually when you do that and there's other people, it's like, ooh, all of us can take a picture. So all of them just come take pictures with you, right? Like crazy. Enjoy yourself, guys. Have fun. Be open-minded to try new things, new cultures. You're in someone else's um, country. So just go there, have fun, explore, take lots of pictures and lots of memories. Okay, I think I've talked enough. Just want to make sure you're prepared if you go to China or if you've been to China and I missed something um, that you experienced, let me know in the comments below. All right, see ya.